Sí, no, Well, welcome back from The Point. This is Smart24 TV and this is the Prime Edition. And as a matter of fact, we discuss more of the business reports as uh, they are actually happening across uh, the country as well as across the world. And in that particular regard, tomorrow will be Women is Day as we'll be celebrating women, among us, uh, many of which will be actually uh, taking us through uh, the situations. Well, from that particular angle, let's kick started off with a very fast story. I am Joran Paul Sonka. As the Parliamentary Committee on Land Commission has today met to resolve the Naguru Nakawa land saga. This was on orders of the Deputy Speaker of Parliament to investigate these wrangles that are on this land in terms of reference of claims and to establish the genuine owners. Let's have the details. After some wrangles and claims from different people claiming to be the owners of Naguru Nakawa land, the Speaker of Parliament took the matter to the Committee of Land Commission for investigation. The reference for the ad hoc committee investigating the Nakawa Naguru land. Terms of reference number one, to ascertain the various claimants, the nature of claims they have in the land, the basis of such claims, and further establish the genuine ownership of the disputed Nakawa Naguru estate land to examine the status or fate of the former occupants in the Nakawa Nagul estate land in light of the ongoing disputes over the land. Uh, number three, to examine the process through which the land in Nakawa Nagul was allocated to various claimants. To establish the total amount of proceeds from the sale or rent of land in the Nakawa Nagur estate to establish any possible fraudulent activities or flaws committed in the disposal, stroke, allocation of land in the Nakawa Nagur estate. Honorable Asumani Basalidwa, MP Bujiri District, proposed that stakeholders should appear before the committee for explanation. There is this company, OPEC, that was initially given this land uh, to construct what they prefer to call a satellite city, a low-cost unit, but did not. It would also be very, very good for us to interact with them. Propose, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, this Nakawa Naguru has so many stakeholders. You have the previous occupants or tenants, and they organized. They have an association. So it is important that we agree to meet them. Furthermore, the committee suggests to meet the former minister who was in charge of the land in 2007. This will help in proper investigation of this matter. We should be able to invite witnesses, including the former ministers, from the time this land was being given away uh, in 2007 and then onwards, because for this assignment we must walk through the journey of this land, when the tenants were there, how it moves to OPEC, from OPEC to the, some, uh, some group of people, to the current owners, and the, that walk through should be able to help us fulfill the terms of reference to accomplish this saga the chairperson says that the truth must be told the right owners are known the center of the probe is in the terms of reference to know the, the rightful owners 
to know who gave them, to know who is there fraudulently, to know whether the processes of, this, of, of allocation were done in the right way, whether there were any fraudulent activities, and uh, any other matters incidental. All right. Now, besides that, let's talk the other story as uh, nations, businesses, communities and groups may benefit from the implementation of programs and policies that adopt the notion of female empowerment. Through this, there is enhancement of the quality and the quantity of human resource available for development. Let's have the details. Nations, businesses, communities and groups may benefit from the implementation of programs, policies that adopt the notion of female empowerment. Through this, there is an enhancement of the quality and the quantity of human resources available for development. Smart 24 TV catches up with Regina, the managing director for Rena Beverage Solution, where she told her story on what inspired her to become a manufacturer, which has led to her success. Small, like a job, like a hobby, but with uh, an ambition and uh, several objectives. I began this uh, business in uh, 20. 10 after training in value addition and uh, I saw that value addition was the way to go for my passion fruits and the uh, other things so I made concentrate out of my passion fruits from the garden sold it to friends and uh, I looked at the quality which was uh, desired however uh, Later on, I saw a need to diversify my business from passion fruits to, uh, to wine and uh, to other juices, which is mainly hibiscus. With only 50,000, Regina was able to sustain her business to where it is now. As you see, I started with 50,000. Just to make the simple juice I needed to make. As the people picked the interest in my products, I increased the volumes slowly by slowly. From a two liter uh, sulfuria for, for concentrate to a five liter to a hundred liters, I bought a pasteurizer for the passion fruits. I then later on when we started making hibiscus, I graduated to a bigger pasteurizer which makes uh, about 500 liters a batch. And uh, I bought simple machines to do the powder for hibiscus. And right now I have uh, a big machine for Tea bags. Businesses fail at any time. However, what should be done to ensure the business is successful? I have gone through and how I have been helped. I want to encourage women to join associations because for me, I joined UZIA, Uganda Small Scale Industries. There are free training programs there offered by Ministry of Trade and the other bodies including the URA, UNBS. I learned quite a lot from them. I still learn quite a lot from them. Then I also joined the Uganda Manufacturer Association. There are also trainings which go on plus the exhibitions. Before COVID we could learn quite a lot from the exhibitions. And then Uganda Women Entrepreneurs Association. That one has really been a backbone for me to train in a number of things and to be exposed in quite a number of things. So the ladies out there, don't fear to associate. Uh, associations give you the, the skills you need, give you the exposures, and they create linkages and opportunities for you. Women empowerment and promotion of rights has emerged as a part of a major global movement and is continuing to break new ground in recent years. Days like International Women's Empowerment Day is also gaining more momentum. 
And we're still celebrating women, aren't we? Uh, aren't we? Hmm. And uh, tomorrow will be Women's Day. Thanks uh, to Naomi Mutumba. So story reported, compiled by a woman. Let's head to the other story now. As uh, business and law women in business must follow policies. As women in business have been challenged known to run away from policies that govern the entire business environment in Uganda. As Ali stated, legal, tax and commercial considerations influence the business structures using Uganda, though in some cases the law is specific on the entity type of undertake or the entity type to undertake regulated by business. Jamima Kasimbazi, uh, the executive director of Women in Self-Employment Organization, urged women as well to form groups to tap funding opportunities that may come across. Let's of women in self-employment, in short wise, and we are looking at uplifting uh, women who are doing petty business to formalizing their businesses. And we would like to appeal to women that if they want to uh, do better business, it's better to be in groups where they can get funding and they use that money to do bigger businesses. And we encourage them to, to formalize their businesses also. Now, the reason we are here is to make sure that we educate women on the policies that protect their, their businesses and their lives. Because most women are exposed to danger. They do businesses, especially petty businesses, illegal businesses, and they are subjected to being harassed by a role, a, a task force, the by what you about, enforcement forces. Recommendation is how close are we to government? Or are we playing games that as soon as we see KCCA or local government, we run in all directions, we throw away our things? I think one of the things that WISE has to probably train these people is that once you go into business, there are risks you have already taken. Let us try not to run away from policing. Policing happens when you don't know what to do where to be and how to manage. Now, the second thing that government of Uganda has put in place, we all kept hearing the stimulants programs which were coming up, the stimulants program and the stimulants program. Uh, the one that all of us should be looking forward to is the parish module development fund. All right. Now, away from uh, the issue regarding celebrating women, let's talk associated car dealers. As the associated car dealers have recorded a reduction in sales of the rise in price by 16% on used cars. Bali Albert, the assistant director of Wolver Motors, says that the more prices and taxes go high, the more they register a low turn-up of customers in their business. Pedersen Mumbere takes this away. Logistical challenges and an increase in shipping prices have pushed up the cost of motor vehicles by an average of 1.7 million, which represents at least 16%. The increase comes on the back of a global pandemic occasioned by COVID-19 and an escalation in the general cost of goods and services across the world. Associated car dealers have therefore recorded a reduction in sales after a rise in price by 16% on the used cars. In an interview with the Smart24 TV, Buddy Albert, the assistant director of Motors, says that the more the prices go higher, the more they register low turn-up of customers. affected us so much that uh, the clientele base reduced uh, compared to uh, the, the sales we used to make. Because of the taxes, yeah, for example, if you, 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 you're to invest in 20M in a, in a car, uh, then, then, then that means you're forced to sell it at 25. Now someone to come with 25 uh, cash, 
that's a, a long way to go. For instance, about six months ago, Toyota Fielder, which cost 2,700 US dollars, now goes for 4,500 US dollars. While most third generation vehicles costing about 15 million have since increased to 18 million. The, the, only, uh, the, the, the places we buy the cars, we ship those cars from Japan. Uh, $2,000, 2000 2000 you can buy a car at, at, at $2,000. US dollars. And that's approximately uh, 7 m with shipment. We, uh, I mean, you buy it up to Mombasa, being shipped up to Mombasa. Now, you've come here to face taxes. You'll find that uh, you'll pay taxes, uh, you, you'll pay 14 m in taxes so you, you can you, you can you can also calculate the difference 7 m to 14 so you can see that the taxes are higher than the purchase price and then uh, not only taxes you after paying taxes you have to go to uh, you, you you have to buy the third party you have to put in other 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 small small taxes for you to be able to access to use the car on the road actually they tell you the place uh they they, they give you the place with the shipment inclusive that, that that's the, 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 the that's how they do business so you find that uh for example if you're buying a wish at 2000 and uh, 2500 us dollars with shipment then you come here to pay 14 m uh you're asking how does it come to uganda now when uh, it comes up to mombasa uh, we have our drivers. Uh, we, sometimes we, we, we use these rural, rural vehicles to bring the cars, but most of the times we, we use our drivers. So you, that's also another expense because uh, you have to, 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 facilitate, to, to facilitate that driver to drive that car from Mombasa to Uganda. That, 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 that takes approximately 2.2. Uh, two. So the 2.2 you add on the 14M, which are the taxes, you add on other, other small, small expenses, you end up, uh, you, you find that uh, the, 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 the place, the, the money you've spent, the taxes you've paid here in Uganda, higher than the purchase, the purchase place. About the prices, dealers said that it has been made once by government's policy, which demands that motor vehicles that are older than 15 years cannot be imported into the country. To import cars, uh, in, in, in at, at, at any year of manufacture, like 1990s, from 1990s to 2000. But now they they, 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 they brought that limit that uh, the cars which are entering Uganda are strictly supposed to be 2008 and above. Now someone to buy a 2008 model, uh, it, it's quite expensive. Data from the industry players suggested that motor vehicle brands that are highly demanded by Ugandans such as Pasu and Raum are being phased out of the market, which leaves only costly brands such as Filda. Prices are estimated to have increased by between 11% to 16% spread across all over the sizes and models. Uganda is a net importer with much of the country's motor vehicle imports sourced from Japan, India, South Africa and Germany. During the quarter ended December 2021, according to the data from the Uganda Revenue Authority, a total of 12,057 used motor vehicles were imported into the country, earning the government at least 375 billion in taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority data also indicates that 4,060 used motor vehicles were imported into the country in October 2021, but slightly reduced to 3,730 units in November before picking up again to 4,267 units in December. <laughs> However, during December, data shows that imports were almost 21% below the 5,188 units that were cleared in the same period in 2020, with the Ugandans spending above 2 trillion annually. And that's according to the data from the Minister of Finance, Pedson Mumbere, Smart 24. One of the local musicians in the country did the uh, 
set up a song called Gendo Gule Motoka. Uh, so I do guess you should actually go and buy yourself a car. But the prices are shooting high, uh, shooting up. Well, away from that, let's look at the campaign against counterfeit gadgets on the market. As the Uganda Communications Commission has fueled its operations in regard to erasing counterfeit communication gadgets in the domestic market. This has been due to their negative impact to the communication system in the nation, which has hindered business transactions. Andrew Barije with the details. The government, through the Uganda Communications Commission, has patterned with the private sector and civil society organizations to prepare the public ahead of the planned blocking of counterfeit mobile phones and other communication gadgets from the market. After a series of attempts to rid the market of substandard and counterfeit phones for more than a decade, the government has opted for mobilization of the public and sensitization of consumers and traders on the effects of this trade. Joseph Chizito, head of the Consumer Protection Department, Uganda Communications Commission, says adaptation of a collaborative strategy with the different stakeholders will be a milestone at achieving a total ban on the importation of counterfeit communication gadgets. Stakeholder engagement. Stakeholder engagement means you talk to the importers. Stakeholder engagement means you talk to other regulators because you cannot do this alone. We are we're adopting a collaborative approach. You have to talk to the people in charge of the gates of the country, what comes in the URAs and any other force bodies out there. You have to talk to the, the, to, to the bodies that deal with standards. We are handling sector standards, communication sector standards. There's a body that handles national standards, UNBS, and any others. You have to talk to the decision-making levels of the country. Parliament, ICT committee, uh, National Security Council. All these people, you need to talk to them because there are many other facets. It's not just your area of regulating. No, it's a, it's a big, broad spectrum. So you cannot go solo. You have to talk to the bodies that, force, uh, that do enforcement, the police and the rest. You have to deal with the traders, the people who bring these gadgets for business and pay taxes. We have to recognize that. But we need to tell them that bring the right thing that, will, that is in the interest of the country overall. So the stakeholder engagement, and then you need to talk to the consumers, because the consumers are the ones who are going to buy. Uganda Communications Commission says for now it is important to discourage the demand of such gadgets, which will involve mindset change, that when it's clear that the market is aware of the dangers, another step will have to be taken. Joseph Chizito says otherwise at the time, the system will reject the connection of a phone when it's deemed counterfeit. He, however, explains procedures to be undertaken by the citizens so that they can ascertain the validity of their communication gadgets. Or oh, if you have COVID, there's a home kit you can do to test. But there's also the hard one, what they call the PCR in COVID. Now for us, we have the home kit you can use. Level one, get your device, dial star hash zero six hash. Even before you enter, it will bring you a 15-digit number. A number, a long number that has 15 digits. Note it on the side. Step number two, access any browser and go to ucc.co.ug. Just go two, three steps. You'll see a space marked verify. In that space where it has said verify, enter that number press enter it will give you results it will tell you your phone is uh, illeg illegitimate or your phone is authentic in 2018 the government withdrew and counterfeit goods bill 2010 from the parliament saying it did not adequately cater to the objectives it otherwise targeted barija andrew smart 24Let's talk sports now as uh, we start off with the Uganda Cranes. Uh, the Uganda Cranes head coach Milton Mitchell Sarita Jovic has named 35 players in the provisional team ahead of the upcoming Four Nation mini tournament in Uzbekistan. Uh, the team captain Emmanuel Arnold Okui, now with Chiovo Sports in Rwanda, and Farouk Mir have returned after missing out in the recent past for different reasons. Must I forget, Farouk Mir plays in Ukraine. 
And uh, other returnees also include Alan Chambade, Alan Okello, among others. Jeff Hudson Chigozi has more of the details. Uganda Cranes head coach Milton Mitchell Shajovic has named 35 players on the provisional team ahead of the upcoming Four Nation Mint tournament in Uzbekistan. Team captain Emmanuel Arnold Okui, now with Jovi Stars in Rwanda, and Falukmi have returned after missing out in the recent past for different reasons. Other returnees also include Alan Chambade, Alan Okel, and others. The team consists of 20 local based players and 15 international players with goalkeepers such as Charles Rukwago from St. George, Ethiopia, Alliance Nafian from ULA Uganda, Ismail Watenga from Chippa United South Africa, Benjamin Ochan KCCA, Jaco Market Vipers and Defenders, James Begisa from UPDF, Hassan Jura from KCCA, Isaac Amuleme from Victoria Zizkov Czech Republic, Herbert Achai KCCA, Bevis Mugabe Motherwell from Scotland, Timothy Dens Awani from Ashdod of Israel, Hadi Dirwali the Vipers, Livingston Vipers, and Najib Fesali from URA. Central midfielders, we have Khalid Aucho from Young Africans Tanzania, Bobos Bialuhanga Vipers, Steven Terwada from New York Red Bulls USA, George Kasonko Ball, Marvin Youngman Solitiro Bright Stars, Moses Weiss of Passport United of South Africa. Attacking midfielders, Alan Okero from Paladu, Algeria, Martin Kiza Express, Najib Yiga Vipers, Alan Chamba de El Guna Egypt, Faluk Mia Lviv Ukraine, Milton Kalisa Vipers, and Rogers Mato from KC. CCA, Emmanuel Arnold Okwichi of Rwanda, Patrick Henry Kadu KCCA, Mohamed Shaban from Onduparaka, Fad by from Benay Saken Israel, Derek Kakwaza from Malmiela Lativa, Alfred Leku Alwa Hill, Yunus Junior Centum Vipers, and Sadat Happy Anaku KCCA, Jeff Hudson Chigozi, Smart 24 Prime News. Jeff Hudson, Chigozi, many thanks for that particular report. Now that brings us to the end of the Prime Edition. Tomorrow is D-Day. Today has been the eve of Women's Day, the 7th of March 2022. And the theme for Women's Day celebration will be uh, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. As we're looking at how women can be put in an inclusive journey of gender equality well show us some love by adding us up on twitter facebook and instagram or on at smart 24 tv and as well the website is www.smart24tv.com i'm joran paul sonko on twitter facebook and instagram well this is it for prime edition today tomorrow we continue with duties and we will start up the day with smb smart means business hey and it's a women affair throughout the day. You wouldn't want to miss this for, let's say, informative shows here on Smart24 TV. We drive business and we are definitely good to go. Thank you very much. And uh, for being part of us, it's a goodbye and a good night as well. Twenty four driving business.